Good morning, St. John's Lutheran Church and friends. It is good to be with you again this day. Thank you for being with us on our video and our online presence. And uh, we truly do pray for God's blessings as you worship with us today. Today we are going to be recognizing our veterans and giving thanks to them. If you go past the church, you will notice that we have a sign out on our hillside thanking veterans for their service. And if you go online, you will see our online um, announcements. And it will list all the people that are veterans of this place and that we do give thanks for what they have done. So let's just take a moment and pause and say a prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for the men and women who have served and defended our country and the values of freedom and justice we hold so dear. Help us to be mindful of the sacrifices they made and the hardship endured by their families and friends. Help us so that we never take for granted the privileges they have secured for us. Bless them and keep them. Hear us, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We do take a moment as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this day. We do come to this time of worship as we live in the strong and living name of our God, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions and turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. Either sing along or hum along to Oh Beautiful for Spacious Skies or America the Beautiful.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. When you hear me say the words, let us pray to the Lord, if you would respond, Lord, have mercy. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the health of creation, for the abundant harvest that all may share, and for peaceful times, let us pray for, to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For public servants, for our government, and for those who protect us, for those who work to bring peace and justice, healing and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel, for those who are sick and suffering, for those who are in captivity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance in time of affliction, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For all servants of the church, for this gathering of your people, for all people who await from from the Lord, great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hi, all you amazing children of God. I'm so glad you could join us for worship today. Today's gospel is a story that's a parable, right? Remember, a parable is a story Jesus told with a meaning. And parables are sometimes tricky because Jesus doesn't always tell us what we're supposed to learn from the parable. Jesus asks us. Who was the right one? Who was the good neighbor? Who, sometimes he doesn't even ask us who, he just ends the parable. Today's parable is a story of 10 girls who are bridesmaids who have to have lanterns with oil to light the night. It's a little confusing because we don't do this anymore. So I thought of a, a comparison you might know. I teach confirmation. I've taught confirmation for like 25 years. And sometimes when we aren't in a pandemic and we gather for confirmation, one of the students forgets a pencil. I mean, the student should have known better, right? You come to class, you bring a pencil, a highlighter, and your Bible, okay? And sometimes they forget. And do you know what happens when someone forgets? Somebody else who's brought lots of pencils to confirmation says, here, you can use one of mine. Or I bring extra pencils to class and I say, hey, you can borrow this one. It's pretty simple. God tells us that we should love one another as God has loved us. 
Jesus tells us to love our neighbors. So if we love one another, when one of our friends or even just somebody we encounter doesn't have something and we have lots of it, we should share it. It's really simple. I bet that you do that all the time. I bet that you share your toys. I bet sometimes you share homework notes. I bet sometimes you share a bag of popcorn. I bet sometimes you share space on the couch with your brother or your sister so you can watch a movie. Man, you've probably even shared balls outside so you can play. Sharing. When you have something and somebody else doesn't, share. It's that simple. Because Jesus says the most important things for us to do is to love God and love our neighbor. And I know you know how to love your neighbor. So remember to show others what that looks like. Will you pray with me? Hello, God. Thank you for being a loving God. You show us how to love others. Help us remember to share what we have with others. Amen. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us. The first reading today is from Amos, chapter 5, verses 18 through 24. Alas, for who you desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is a darkness, not light. As if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against a wall and was bitten by a snake. It is not the day of the Lord. Darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate and despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being for your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs, I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters the, and righteousness like an overflowing stream. The next reading is from Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those be put to shame and confusion who seek my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor to de who desire to hurt me. Let those who say, aha, aha, Turn back because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. But I am poor and needy. Hasten to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. The second reading is from First Theologians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died so that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means proceed those who have died. For the Lord himself, with the cry of command from the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise again. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together, with them to meet the Lord in the air, so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Our Holy Gospel for this weekend comes to us from Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks, flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out and meet him. 
And all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. O come, Holy Spirit, come. O come, Holy Spirit, come. Come in our hearts, come in our lives. O come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. I think I said a couple of weeks ago that I'm really ready for the year of Matthew to be done. And we only have a couple more weeks left of that. Thanks be to God. Because I find the book, the Gospel of Matthew, to be a really difficult book, particularly the parables. And today is no exception to that. Now, something that most of you don't know about me is that I was a strategic planner prior to going to seminary. I worked in healthcare for the most part. And whenever I hear this story of the wise and foolish virgins, I think, I think of what was said so often in my strategic planning days. Lack of planning on your part does not create a chaos on my part. Meaning that if you don't do your own planning and your own figuring out and your own setting your own course and taking care of yourself, if something happens and it becomes chaos and a panic, that's not my problem, that's your problem. And that's kind of what I hear when I hear this story. Is is that, you know, some of the Bridesmaids came with their lamps and oil, and some came with just their lamps and not enough oil or none at all. And then they asked the ones who did plan, will you help us out? And the answer was no. No. You should have thought about it yourselves. Huh. Well, that might be true might just be true. And it's really odd to be preaching following the week that we have had in our country. <clears throat> now I'm going to make the assumption that half of you are kind of satisfied with the election and half of you are kind of irritated. Some of you are hopeful and some of you are fearful. Some of you are going, oh, no, what? And kind of wondering, ooh, what does this all mean? And some of you are going, well, now what? And it's like, huh, maybe we can get someplace now. Half of you are saying, you know, I just don't get it. Is it the country? Or is it me? You know, I think we are a picture of our country as a whole whenever we gather together as, our, as people, as God's people. We come to life and we come together kind of 50-50. I am just going to make that assumption. And here we have, in our story for today, 50-50. Half the bridesmaids, or we call them the wise and foolish virgins, came ready and half didn't. Half had what they needed, the other half didn't. It's 
kind of like life, huh? And it's pretty easy to make judgments about one half or the other. To label them wise or label them foolish. To label them generous or label them expectant. It's pretty easy to put point fingers and label people. And I think for this pastor this week, here's where I have come out. Church, we got a lot of work to do. If we ever wanted job description, Security, we got it. Each and every one of us as disciples of Jesus. It doesn't do anybody any good to point a finger and call something, someone something in particular. To put a label on them. Wise or foolish, rich or poor, Young or old, gay or straight, rich or poor, wise or foolish, male or female, Republican or Democrat, blue or red. It doesn't do us any good at all. Not one speck. We have great job security if we name ourselves disciples of Jesus. It's hard work. It's hard work. It's hard work to be kind. It's hard work to reach out to someone who is not like us. Whatever that description is. It's hard work saying, you know what? We got a lot of work to do. There's a lot of people who need to know that God loves them just as they are in this moment. It's going to take a lot of work to do the healing that needs to happen certainly nationwide, but in our own communities, in our own neighborhoods, in our own families, in our own homes. So maybe we don't start with the big picture. Maybe, just maybe, we start inside, we start in our own homes, we venture out into our own families, our own neighborhoods, our own communities, and then let's see where we get. Then let's figure it out one step at a time. Because it's not easy. That isn't what God promises us. God doesn't say, follow me and it'll all be good. That's not the way it works. You've been around me now a couple of weeks. I love the fact that you use the quote-unquote new Lord's Prayer. It's only been around about 40 years, so it's not quite so new. But if you listen to me, there's a line in there that says, save us from the time of trial. And I always change the preposition. I say, save us in the time of trial. 
because we are going to be in trials in our life. We are going to be in situations where we're going to wonder what's up and what's down, what's in and what's out. And as people of the cross, as disciples of Jesus, we are given the promise that we are not alone in those moments and that God does come and save us in our moments of trial, giving us breath, giving us hope, letting us know that if we just take it one step at a time, we do change this world. We do make this world a different place. When we eliminate those labels, when we eliminate pointing the finger at the other and recognizing it's as much about us as it is about anything else, So maybe the story about the wise and the few foolish bridesmaids is one that we have to pay attention to. Maybe it is about Jesus saying, you know, you can draw a little fence around what's safe. I've done that in my life. Every single time I have done that, Jesus has been on the other side of the fence, looking at me and going, so what you doing over there, Naomi? You might want to come over here. There's some pretty great people over here, some people that could use some love, some people could use some help, some people that could use you. So this week... What then do we say about these things? What we say is, if God is for us, who can be against us? And that gives us everything we need to go out into the world and make a difference. So, as much as I hate to say it, thanks be to God this week for the wise and the foolish bridesmaid story. It made a difference for me. May it also make a difference for you. Amen.
to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, rouse in us deep praise as we gather today. Sustain the work of all the church, of musicians and artists, of teachers and leaders of those who clean and those who record, those who answer the phone, and those who put together the statements. May we all lead in praise and prayer. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of all who care for your creation. Help us to be in harmony with your living creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy God, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Be in the hearts of those who lead. Be present in justice and mercy, and love. And this week we particularly pray for those newly elected leaders and those we are still learning. May they be filled with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share with those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. We ask you especially to be with these people, your precious ones, Diana and Karen, Dwayne, Gail, Scott, Scott's uncle, God's friend. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Hear, heal the wounds, both physical and mental experienced by our service members. Hear us, O oh God. 
Your mercy is great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers, those prayers that we pray with our lips, those that are written on our hearts, and those we utter only in sighs. We pray all of them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. We now prepare our hearts and our minds for the gift of the meal. If you would gather bread or crackers, grape juice or wine, and join in this meal. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all. On the night before he died, our Lord and Savior took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave things, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all, all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and you are all welcome here, for the gifts of God are free. As you take the bread, no, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you take the wine or juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, give you strength and peace today and into your life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have set a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. And now until we meet again, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.